Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part three of building a real working Iron Man exosuit arm, and possibly a whole suit if it works out well. The early episodes of this series, much like my other content, are all about R&D and working out what to do. Obviously it's quite a big project and we need to make sure we do it properly. So last time I built a little model of an exosuit with my little dummy here so we could work out how the joints might move in the arm. Obviously it's going to be quite a lot bigger than an Iron Man arm, but there we go. And also made this hand controller which is basically a four axis joystick so that I can control the arm and push it all around. So have a look in those episodes for that. Those episodes have sparked quite a lot of conversation and quite a lot of comments, which is quite good. And this is another R&D episode where we're going to try and work out about transferring power from a gearbox, which you looked at in part one, using chains or cables or something like that, and really try and work out what the structure of the suit is, how all of the linkages work. Hopefully then next time we can actually get on building the real thing. Here's the original gearbox that we looked at in part one and what I had here is a brushless motor with a drive belt that drives a pulley which we can see at the back here and then there's a gear train basically and as we go from this end to this end of the gear train this end of course is much slower moving and has more torque this one I think was doing 20,000 rpm tops so brushless motors are pretty powerful but this is a brushless in runner which um, goes really fast and doesn't have much torque, but if we run it really fast and gear it down, we can get a lot of power. And the maximum power drain there was about 80 amps at 11.1 uh, volts or so, so we get the best part of a kilowatt out of it, which is quite a lot of input power. So what we found, of course, was the plastic gears broke, um, and we lost some teeth off them because they weren't strong enough, and we talked about stronger gear material like some of the 3D printing materials like Tallman Alloy, and also, of course, metal gears. And at the end of that episode, I discussed chain drive, which, of course, the chain wraps all the way around the sprocket, so it grips every tooth instead of the load being on one or two teeth. So since then, I've been thinking quite a lot about how can we make this even better? So instead of having a gearbox that gears up and gives us the load all in one place that we need for turning the joints, perhaps we can distribute it better than that. The answer I've come up with, of course, is to use a block and tackle, and I did this before in Hulkbuster's hands. So I used this kind of mechanism to pull the hand up more slowly than the motor was turning, so I was using a cordless screwdriver motor, and also instead of having to build a gearbox on that, I just pulled the string around a block and tackle that was looped round several times, and that gave me more power and a reduced speed. So looking on Google Images, there's lots of uh, images of blocks and tackles, and of course the general plan is that you wrap a cable round and round a pulley lots and lots of times and each time you wrap it round you have to pull twice as much cable to get the same amount of reduction between the two ends where the pulleys are and you also double the torque each time the same as if you were gearing it down on a one to two ratio. So this seems like a really good approach and we could use one of these on either side of the joint like a bicep and a tricep for instance. So let's just say we've got a pulley or a sprocket or something that's the output of our gearbox. Obviously it doesn't need to be as geared down as we did before because we're actually going to use the blocks and tackles on each side like a bicep and a tricep to take some of that load and gear it down further and give us more um, force. So uh, ideally we'd have a pulley here and we would run like a bicep and a tricep to each side. So as we pull up one side the other one gets let out. Um, and then we can use this as our elbow or whichever other axis. The only problem is, um, having tested this, and that's why I made this little 3D print here, is that in fact when we tip this, we have to let out far more than we let in, um, which means that the cord going around the pulley would have to change length. So that's a bit of a challenge. So I made this to test what the best thing to do is, um, and I measured from different points. So I tried with sort of, if you imagine the pulley here, going around some little pulleys and going down to here, going down to sort of halfway and so on um, and I found it was obviously never the same it always lets out more string than it pulls in whichever way you do it. I also tried it with this T-piece like this and also like this to see what would happen but the uh, amount you let out and pull in is never the same unfortunately so this isn't going to work very well. So what of course we need to do is in fact put a big pulley at this end and a pulley at this end and then it's just pulleys going all the way round and then it will unwind the same amount that it winds up because as this tips it's one big round thing so it becomes much more linear than this offset angle. So I'm actually going to build up something now with a block and tackle in each side 
and a big pulley and a little pulley and we'll check that the cord stays the same length. I've reprinted the blocks and tackles, we've got three rollers each there and these parts from the Hulkbuster project and I've also made a big gear to go at the bottom which would be the main output for the suit or one of the joints at least and a little pulley in this T-piece so I can attach that to a piece of wood this at the bottom, we can have a pulley here and see if the amount it lets out is the same amount it lets in with the blocks and tackles on each side so I better get that assembled and we can do the test so starting to piece this together, this string goes around here and the other blocks are anchored at the top so this one will of course pull the main output shaft and I've just taped on the string for now, it's anchored onto a screw but so it doesn't fall off while I string it up and we'll take the tape off when it's operational. I had to print some more of these of course because I need two on each side so there's one red one because I had all of the black filament in other printers at the time so I now need to string up the main pulley which represents the motor drive to go around these pulleys lots and lots of times and be anchored and it should pull these together when the motor runs. All right, so it's all strung up. It's one continuous piece of string that goes around this pulley and goes around these and is anchored here. The other end of it is anchored over here. So now if I move this part, you'll notice that this is going really fast. So obviously if this was just a pulley driving the big pulley, then it would only turn at a certain speed just to pass the cord around here. But because we've got it looped around these several times, like opposing muscles, it goes really much faster and a lot more string has to pass it so I have to turn this quite a lot to get anything to turn out here. Now I've only used four of the pulleys out of the six on each side so there's some spare ones so my piece of string wasn't long enough but I could have gone round another time and then instead of having to turn this twice and have it multiplied by two by this loop of string I could have had it multiplied by three which means I have three times less torque required on here but it needs to move three times faster to get this to move at the same speed. So it looks like my string stays the same length, there's no slack appearing in the system due to the fact that effectively it's a pulley and pulleys can be different sizes and that's fine. So this seems like quite a good approach. So this is almost full size for a bicep for instance and the other joints Obviously we can make these things come in more so it's not so square and it would be better anyway for these strings to follow on nearly the same sort of contour there so it's not pulling this inwards as the motor pulls. And of course we can try and make some of the parts out of polymers, probably the ABS parts aren't strong enough but we could use nylon rollers for instance even if they're in a metal block because the load is balanced across all of these strings which might be up to six on each side provided the anchors on the actual top and the bottom are strong enough so we can get a much thicker bit of cord to go around the pulley then of course these tops and bottoms take all the load and these don't and that's the reason why the pulleys can be weaker as well because the load is balanced across all six of them so there's much less load required on this as well and if we have those six pulleys all in use then this has hardly any load on it at all which means our gearbox also doesn't need to be that strong provided these main anchors and the actual structure is strong enough so I think this is a really good approach to going forward and trying to build this suit out of materials I can get hold of easily. There's also plenty of space to fit the motor and gearbox because we've got this whole middle completely empty here so that would be the output shaft and this is the gearbox which has about the right sort of reduction we did in part one although this thing's completely oversized the main part with the gears and this motor could easily be made to fit in the middle here so we can do that on each joint that's required. I thought about combining two of the axes so for instance in the shoulder we could get two axes one inside the other with some sort of gimbal. Um, the problem is of course we need a piece fixed and a piece that moves and one of those has to be in the middle in this case the green part so the red part rotates in one way and then the blue part rotates the other way which is where the arm is and these uh, large surfaces we've got here can act as pulleys so that would act to move the arm sort of left to right as we're looking at it now and the green one could move it the other way so that's perpendicular but in order to actually attach the arm to anything we need to anchor to the green part so I cut into the rings like this so that we can anchor the green part perhaps to the back of the sort of collar of the suit uh, that whole thing would still need to rotate um, kind of in this axis but that could be another separate axis making that part of the gimbal as well is going to be a nightmare um, but then I realised this didn't work at all in fact so um, the problem is of course once we start uh, moving a part of this around so that it rotates the blue against the red part it means that the blue part's not in line with the green part anymore so essentially using the red part as the pulley and rotating the blue part around it that's all very well and good but obviously then the green pulley isn't in line for the other axis to go sideways anymore 
So then I decided we should gimbal that green pulley as well so it can move, but then that only leaves us with an attachment point of the axle with this sort of uh, brown thing attached, so the hub stays still, and then the purple hinge allows the green thing to move. And that means now when we move the blue part side to side, the green part goes with it, and the red pulley also stays in line with it. So now we can move in the other axis and everything tilts that way as well using the green pulley to drive it, which it stays in line with. So that would essentially involve having one of these built this way up that moves my arm outwards, and another one on that axis that moves my arm this way, and combining those at perpendicular angles into one massive gimbal assembly. But that seems overcomplicated, so I'm not going to do that. So coming back to this original design actually makes quite a lot of sense because we need that long stick essentially so there's room for the block and tackle to pull each joint round so there needs to be enough travel. So uh, what we could do of course is either put uh, in the forearm it pulling the elbow or we could put that in where the bicep and the tricep would be. Obviously we might want the forearm space there to do a similar thing to operate a gripper but uh, one way or the other we've got a long distance here we can use to twist that joint there and to twist this one here. Looking at the back of this, we've got this joint next, which needs to go, um, sorry, it needs to twist that way, in fact, but we've got quite a long distance here where we could run that up to rotate this joint. So that's quite possible, provided that all of this rotates when we actuate this joint, which we could do. We could make one massive rotational tower. We could even square these up so they're both upright the only challenge we've got is rotating in this axis, but we could of course have something that sticks out the back of the suit as unsightly as it is, or we could overlap them this way, one at the top and one at the bottom, to turn the two towers. So the plan is now I'm going to make a scale model of this suit, allowing space for that type of actuator, and I think that's going to be the plan for the final suit. So I've made another model which I'm going to 3D print, which is based on those actuators for at least three of the axis. The one for the main rotation is the one on the back here I haven't decided quite what to do with yet. I'm not going to explain this too much in CAD because I'm going to print it and then I can explain it in real life. Now I was going to make a motorised model and try and control it with the controller I made last time, but I decided instead to just make a passive model and next time I'll actually make a full size joint, so I'm going to concentrate my efforts on that. Alright, so here it is. So we've got the same mechanism that we built before with the blocks and tackles, this thing, several times here, in fact three times. So we've got the bicep here, so this would be the motor, that would be the anchor points for the blocks and tackles that would come down to the main pulley. That leaves the forearm clear for another mechanism to activate a gripper on the end, so that's pretty simple to understand. Then on the inside of the arm, in fact at the back here, We've got that whole thing again, so we've got the pulley here, so we've got that mechanism upside down perpendicular to it. So we've got the motor at the bottom, the anchor points for the blocks and tackles, and the pulley here, so that would move the arm outwards. And then we've got another one facing this way with the motor at the bottom, the anchor points, and the pulley at the top. So that will move the arm forwards and backwards. So that gives us three axes there, which we can move around. And the fourth one is the rotation of the arm, which is this axis, which I haven't decided what to do with yet. And it really depends whether I build two arms or one on how much space I've got in the back of the suit to put a similar mechanism with that length for the blocks and tackles to pull around the pulley this way. So I haven't quite decided what to do, that, do on that, but that's going to be the last thing I build. So one observation with having that axis vertical is that everything moves very nicely and that's all good. But actually the twisting motion is really unnatural because it pulls and pushes the arm as I do it. And you'll remember when I built the original model I actually had that vertical axis pointing out at an angle. Which um, gave me quite a nice motion. And that feels much more natural so if I tilt this thing over, in fact at about 45 degrees, suddenly that twisting is becoming a much more natural action. 
And I um, originally copied that angle from a DARPA suit that I saw. And there's various other suits on YouTube that have that pointing out at a straight angle. So I think I probably am going to stick with that angle because it gives a much more natural rotation to the arm, which will follow the human motions better. But that is going to be the last axis I build, essentially. So I think that this is pretty much the structure. It can be a bit more minimal. These things, as I said, when I build the large one are a bit wide. They could be tapered in much more. So this mechanism is more of a triangle than being quite square. And this could be sort of a frame design rather than big slabs of flat things. Although we don't want to have twist, for instance, across this elbow joint without twisting the motorized axis. So we need to make it quite strong and probably double brace all the axis with another thing on the outside. But that's something we need to come on to as we start doing strength tests with the real joints. I think I've done enough R&D in these first three episodes and come up with enough sufficient innovation that I can actually build this quite easily now. So next time I'm going to build the full size joint, at least one of them, probably this one, which is gonna be a bicep and tricep with an actual arm on and then I can string some weight on it and see how much it will lift. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects, and also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com xrobots, where you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. All right, that's all for now.